in the United States. I live in the United States um, and uh, I teach physics. Currently, I'm at North Carolina a and State University. Actually, I like to mention uh, Dr. Sekazi Mithingwa actually saved the day. He just called me about this, that I'm missing the meeting. Uh, he's the one who hired me. Uh, right now, he's a retired uh, professor, and we are always working together. So um, uh, here in the uh, little, uh, uh, you know, logo that you see, uh, you, you see the Amharic uh, in, uh, a script. Uh, it is a direct quote from uh, uh, President Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. Uh, John, F. Kennedy John F. Kennedy said once, ask uh, uh, for what you can do for your country Ask not what the country does for you, something like that. So I translated this in Amharic uh, so that as a, an individual, as a person, as a product of Ethiopia, as a product of Africa, what can I possibly do on my own uh, to do something that I like, something that is useful, something that is related to my own education I'm an educator. I never left the school, uh, you know, since first grade, I'm still in school, so to speak. So that is what I decided to do. So uh, there are a lot of stories that I'm going to tell you, especially young people, how to make yourself mm, really useful to your own community on your own. Okay. I'm going to suggest to you what is called the poor man model. And the poor man model, uh, uh, simply says, uh, it is you who are going to change the world. So you will change the world. It doesn't mean you don't need anybody else, but how do you configure your life, your work in such a way that you become so useful and so powerful uh, on your own? One of these ideas is about learning communities. So there is a big definition of learning, the, uh, learning communities. I don't want to uh, you know, uh, insult your intelligence on defining what learning communities mean. But sometimes some of these things are defined in a scientific way. Some of them can be defined in a way that is that you might think appropriate. Why not? So uh, one idea that I would suggest is that you don't need to be a follower of any kind of philosophy point of view. You can create your own point of view. But when you define your point of view in terms of, for example, supporting your own community, you have to follow certain rules, OK? For example, uh, in third grade, we learn, uh, we teach our kids, treat others the way you want to be treated, right? So always think like that. So uh, how do you do it, OK? So I'm going to give you ideas. And then you can think about what you can do along the same line, you know, what things that you can adopt from my suggestion. So here is uh, how you define learning community. In my case, I saw problems. I'll tell you problems that I have seen at local level in Ethiopia, at school level in Ethiopia, all the way to Africa level, okay? So uh, how do you define it? In my case, for example, Professional society or subject-based community can be can become a learning community, right? For example, creating the African physics community, the African physical society, or something like that can be a learning community. Um, you can define also your own learning community based on your work, space environment, physical space, virtual space, and also you have to build in, in there, uh, always you have to think about mental constructs. For example, uh, you, uh, in your mental construct, well, in order for me to do this and that, well, I have to talk to my elder or I have to talk to an authority or I have to talk to a funding agency or something like that. I think 
uh, you, that mental construct, sometimes it can act as a negative um, energy on you, or sometimes uh, it is helpful to know. So belief systems are built, uh, built in. Uh, and also motivation by induction. In other words, I can convince, you can convince someone to join you. You can, you can, you can induce him to join you and things like that. And then motivation. Then you define clearly what the work you want to do. For example, the work you want to do, is it academic uh, 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 instruction, research development? Some of them can be high maintenance. In other words, sometimes as an individual, uh, you might think uh, creating a, a research center at your university, right? Uh, yeah, that can be done over a long period of time with lots of people around you. But on the other hand, it's not something that you can immediately do. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, really, when you, you are defining your learning community, remember, it is something that you can deliver, okay, very simply, easily, okay? Um, uh, you can, your learning community can be a professional development. Right here, for example, the African School of Physics created a platform where we, ha we can have conversation. Then from this conversation, we learn something. Uh, uh, we learn something. He is teaching us something. The African School of Physics is teaching us something. This is a learning community. Now it is, for example, up to you to pick some, some idea, some strand, and expand it somewhere at a, an elementary school level or at a club level, a, a physics club level. Uh, collaborator in general is low budget. In other words, you bring many disciplines together, if possible, and each one of them probably volunteer uh, put some funding in there and things like that. So collaboratory, which I'm going to discuss uh, to you, is very easy to do. So now, Habibi, there is a yeah. question on the chat. So I will let uh, Miriana ask her own question. Okay, very neat, yeah. Uh, uh, do you want me to answer? I don't see the chat. Do you see the yeah, chat? Yeah, I, I see the Miriana, do you want to speak or? Yeah, no problems. I mean, it's just, I mean, we, we could have wait to the end uh, for not interrupting. I was just asking uh, for not uh, forgetting. I mean, it is written the poor uh, man model. So my question was where the poor uh, uh, woman model stands in the SN model, no? Because I think we, we shall, uh, it's extremely important, uh, you know, that we keep uh, uh, the language, uh, you know, yeah, so maybe the poor person model, or I, I suppose it, it uh, refers to the, I mean, it's a detail, a bit uh, critical, no? So, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, when, uh, when I wrote this uh, about maybe 15 years ago, maybe you are in elementary school or something, uh, uh, you know, it's a generic one. It, it has no, I, I didn't think about that, by the way. Thank you for reminding the poor person. Yeah, but, but it's uh, important, especially for the younger girls, yeah. Okay. When I tell him in ATM, yeah. Okay. So, uh, now, here is, here is something that, uh, uh, this is crazy, okay? Uh, in the poor man model or poor person model, uh, the change agent, as you, the center, the person uh, who is developing this, um, uh, one person, one dedicated person, that is you, is important. Uh, in all the stuff that I have, uh, I, I'm going to show you, Everything started sometimes 20 years ago, in some cases, 15 years, 10 years ago, especially with the advent of the internet. Uh, one person became powerful. In fact, if you look at the condition of the world at this time, right, the condition of the world at this time, there are these uh, uh, people who can influence by simply putting out certain words and certain sentences on Facebook and Twitter and things like that. They can destroy the world, they can build the world. One person, okay? Okay, so what I have done when I created my collaboratories, it, I am listing some of the successful collaboratories, okay? Uh, the first one is the Gondor School of Science and Technology. It's a simple uh, collaboratory. The way we, Gondor is one of the ancient cities of Ethiopia. And there is a university called the University of Gondar. I hope Keteve and your, stu your students will go one day and visit. It's one of the most beautiful places. Lots of physics is going on over there, by the way. Uh, so what we started was 
with a simple conversation with a student at Gondar University in 2009. So the conversation is, listen, in Gondar University, uh, we, we lack books. We don't have library, physics library for books. So what do you want to do? Well, let's, let's create this, this idea that everybody who graduated from Gondar, who worked at Gondar, will do something collectively throughout the world and let's support the library with books. That's the simple one. Okay, we started a Facebook page, two of us, two of us. And then we collected everybody from the area, including even people who are not affiliated from the universities and told them the problem. Once that is ongoing, immediately what we have done is we called every intellectual who uh, belong to that university to participate in what is called an education campaign. The campaign works for one week or two days or three days. Remember, we are not subject oriented. A chemist can come, a physicist can come, but the Gondar University will do the logistics. With that, two people, with this agreement, we have opened up right now a full-fledged Gondar School of Science and Technology. So every year we have a school, uh, every year we have a, a support system for students and things like that. This became a learning community that supports Gondar University. Okay? And then, uh, and then the Asher Larsi school, school Development Organization began again with two people. Here is something about that place, by the way. I was born and raised there. I have benefit. I know the people. Uh, my friends actually are teaching in that school. Now, the idea is to support one school. Right now, in that area, we are supporting 40 schools in academics, in outreach, and things like that. That's the learning community. And this community, by the way, is not localized there. It is spread throughout the world. Now, when you scale it up, for example, the African Material Research Society. Have you heard about the Af African Material Research Society? There is an African Material Research Society that was established after 2001. So sometimes when you create a learning community, sometimes you are daring the community. Sometimes you can't do it on your own. It is so big. At Africa level, for a few people like Keteve and me and Sekari to create the African Physical uh, Material Research Society, it's very hard. You, you, you have to bring a lot of groups and things like that together. So what you do is, in order to wake the Africans up, okay, so that they can stand up and work on their own, you dare them. Oh, we have the African physical, we created this in 1998. It took conversations, encouragement, every time we go to the places, we are telling them we have the African Research Material Research Society. Finally, the American Material Research Society started the conversation and things like that after about 2005. Right now we have an African Material Research Society which is competing with the American Material Research Society. Sometimes the hard one, you dare people to do it. You dare them, okay? African Physical Society. <laughs> Before 2001, nobody was talking about African Physical Society. In 2001, I was in Benin, bless his soul, uh, one of the main people uh, who recently died, the Ghanaian scientist. Uh, I misplaced my name, I think. Uh, Francis Dr. Alote. Uh, Alote. Alote, in 70s and 80s, he had an organization called a Society of African Physicists and Mathematicians, right? He has never mentioned African Physical Society at all. In 2001, we met in Benin and we told him, we are going to have African Physical Society. He said, no. He said, no, we have this society, we don't need it. And finally, thanks to uh, the National Society of Black Physicists and things like that, in Africa now we have African Physical Society. Yeah. You see, you dare people to create something. You see, you become a, 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 an African Physical Society, if it is carefully designed, it can be one of the largest learning, learning, learning uh, community. Uh, right now, what I see is mostly it is kind of um, 
you know, localized, so to speak, but it can be global because there are so many African physicists all over the world. The ATPN Physical Society is the same thing. The ATPN Scientific and Academic Network, uh, it is the largest, it is about 150,000 followers. The African Scientific and Academic Network. So what do we do here is that because internet has created this this interesting environment for us, what we do is we take a few people and we create the networks on social media, Facebook particularly, uh, and things like that, and then promote it so that more young people can come in and ideas can be generated, you see. Uh, the Nigerian Material Research Network is the most interesting one. We created this one in 1998, by the way, this uh, African uh, Nigerian Material Research Network lives on Yahoo groups. Until today, they are using it to communicate about their conferences and things like that. And then we go to alumni, distance education, and things like that. Now, it's about self here. When you create your own learning community, it's how you think about yourself, OK? If you can think of yourself as two people, OK? Really, the power of one means, in that case, it will just be how much you think about yourself, rest to yourself. In other words, you are like four people. So in general, when you want to create a learning community, one person is enough to really initiate this idea. One person is enough to really initiate this idea and then create followers all the way, followers to promote that idea. For example, when I created the ATPN, uh, the ATPN Scientific Network, I created by myself. And then after 10 years, we have 150,000 followers. We are, all, we are all over the world, 150,000 followers. And also, by the way, in the learning community, uh, the quality of the followers is important. Be careful. Uh, right now, for example, there are, uh, there are, you know, things go by the number of likes you get on your social media, right? Oh, I have so many likes, I'm famous. No, when you create your learning community, what you have to do is you have to select by hand, okay, who enters in that community. Uh, for example, if you are, your work focuses on university level, make sure that your members will be university level people, like students, graduate students, faculty, and things like that. By the way, they can be from anywhere. It depends scientific network. There are Nigerian members, Ghanaian members, and things like that. Because the idea is the same. Okay. So, uh, so guys, of there course, is a comment on the chat. Um, there is the African Astronomical Society, of which uh, Miriana and other people are a part and is doing extremely well. I'm registered to that list and I see the activity is uh, really impressive. Yes. They are more active than the African Physical Society, which... Uh... Uh, very active. Uh, I have uh, Miriana. I know Miriana from, uh, I think she works at the uh, Ethiopian uh, Space Science Center or something in the Toto um, uh, Research Center. Uh, before, uh, maybe one day we will tell stories about that, but the African Astronomical Society the East African Astronomical Society, they came about uh, after 2007. If you recall 2007, we had a major, major space physics conference in Ethiopia. And then after that, uh, we went to Zambia, after that, South Africa, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, the ideas of creating the Astronomical Society came about in those, two, in those three conferences. And Maria, Mariana is doing a great job in outreach and research. Uh, I really thank her. And I'm, I'm get, she doesn't know me, but I'm getting her emails and uh, her conversation uh, with her students. Thank you, Mariana. Yeah, there is so, also the African Network of Women in Astronomy. That is also... <laughs> that, that's, a learn, that's a learning community itself. While promoting astronomy, uh, they are actually, uh, you know, they will they will gain momentum uh, by really opening up, you know, to a larger community, larger community while promoting astronomy among women. This is really 
this is really great. Uh, I think we need to talk. So uh, also when you create your, uh, uh, your learning uh, community, you have to define the target group, definitely, like schools and Joe, uh, as I told you, when we work with Gondar, the target was uh, a library, to develop a library. Uh, then after many years of work and communication and things like that, we created the Gondar School of Science and Technology. So this Gondar, by the way, I didn't say, uh, I can say much uh, when, uh, you know, if question arises, the Gondar School of Science and Technology that started in a campaign mode. By the way, when we say campaign mode, uh, we usually do it uh, during Christmas, during Christmas break, during winter break. So all Ethiopians around the world, we call each other and then say, are you going to Ethiopia? Are, yeah, yeah, okay. So somebody, a chemist may come, a physicist may come, an astronomer may come, we, we make a group and then we go Gondar School of Science and Technology. So last year, for example, we did it in five sites in a campaign mode. So Gondar School of Science and Technology changes its name to Adama School of Science and Technology, changes its name to uh, Addis Ababa uh, School of Science and Technology. So we go from, from camp to camp, from site to site to site to site. So that way also there is one benefit here when, when you really internationalize it, uh, we can address the so-called brain drain issue. In our, uh, in our work, we don't believe there is brain drain. Uh, Africa doesn't have brain drain. Uh, our view is that Africa has brain mismanagement. So th th these are two different things. Uh, if you manage- uh, So Abebe, there is um, a comment on the chat uh, that uh, we'd like to hear your opinion on what the African Physical Society can do to be a truly giant continental physical society like uh, the American Physical Society or the European Physical Society? Well, that, that is very simple. Uh, the, in Africa, there are certain things that we really have to correct. Um, uh, the, the, we have to go beyond the symbolism, okay? Uh, beyond the symbolism, that is, if, uh, you know, we don't want to look like the American Physical Society. We don't. Uh, it's, it's just now we don't want to become like them. We want to become an African Physical Society. There are, uh, there are highly um, determined, educated, uh, and always frontline leaders like uh, Sekazi Mitingwa among us, okay? Uh, there are uh, there are African American physicists. There are African physicists. By the way, I kind of make a distinction between African Americans and Africans. Uh, Ethiopian physicists, for example, the largest number of uh, concentration of Ethiopian physicists in North, uh, African physicists in North America are Ethiopians. I am sure probably if we would go do the statistics, again, Ghanaians, Nigerians. So what we have to do with the African Physical Society, in my opinion, is that uh, it has to create a, a larger membership base, not just Africa. Uh, it, opens, uh, it opens up itself to, uh, to the entire African community, let's say in diaspora also. Uh, that way uh, we can easily market it uh, thanks to technology, for example, co when conferences are held, there will be, say, for example, in Zoom, we can bring the leadership from the American side, from Canadian side to endorse it, to, uh, to help it succeed, and so on. And uh, there are many ways, many ways to do it. Uh, uh, probably, uh, if we take time to discuss it, uh, it, would be, it would be a good idea. But uh, opening it up, Mm, and uh, and also not breaking it into pieces. For example, uh, in the American Physical Society, there are lots of lots of rooms for nuclear physics, for uh, materials, for and things like that. Right? No, we have to be all together. In my opinion, we don't need we don't need to break ourselves to little pieces until we get uh, the critical number of people in membership and things like that. And also membership should not be free. We should pay, pay membership. Okay. 
Um, so uh, target group, you construct the agenda. For example, when you construct the agenda, you have to be careful. One, there is an insurgency model. <laughs> so uh, insurgency uh, model. Um, and then the, mm, there is insurgency model is like the liberation front model, by the way. Uh, for example, the African uh, Material Research Society is kind of, uh, it, uh, in 2001, I wrote an article about development of uh, 100 years. What do you like to see in 100 years about the African material research, right? Uh, so the biggest idea that we suggested there is creating the African uh, Material Research Society and then we created the society symbolically uh, that's insurgency and then people bought it and then that's it, you know. Uh, we, we still own the name, by the way. We, we don't shall, we still own the name. Uh, so uh, in both cases, you need uh, an organization with at least one member. That means it is only you, the first guy is you. So you, don't forget that. Mm -hmm. All right. For example, in, a, in our uh, uh, geographically distributed network, uh, I, it doesn't show here, but uh, uh, there are about 40 universities in Ethiopia. And then each university has an outreach program for the schools and things like that. So in our uh, uh, approach, for example, for the Ethiopian scientific network, or for the education campaigns like Gondar School of Technology, what we have is we have one university located somewhere, and then all our activities are built around that university. And uh, I will show you what kind of methodology, logistic methodology that we can use to expand what we want to do. So in other words, Gondar School of, by the way, Gondar is located somewhere here. The Gondar School of uh, Science and Technology, the Gondar University, uh, caters to probably about 100 schools around it and uh, a few towns around it. So what we have is uh, we, we, don't, we don't take just quantum mechanics, uh, you know, advanced nanotechnology and things like that. You know, that's important to the universities, but we have also outreach programs. Uh, we join uh, the science clubs, the space science clubs and things like that. For example, Mariana will like this, um, uh, that we did with Adama, Adama Space Science Club. So everyone in this room uh, right now, uh, definitely you have, uh, uh, you are present in social media. Uh, in this social media, uh, you have basically the right, uh, you know, uh, you have the privilege uh, to speak to your followers to ask questions and chat with your followers. Uh, and uh, so uh, think about, you know, how you can use your own social media to create your, your own uh, learning, uh, learning groups or join some. So think about these two, uh, these two issues. For example, based on what you heard, list the problems and potential solutions. So if there is, a problem, there is a solution. Therefore, there's, you need a learning community uh, to address these issues. Now, based on your experience in your own school or work environment, identify problems and provide solutions. So uh, if uh, we were uh, in a meeting, physical meeting, we would have had a discussion and probably um, can create the virtual rooms. Uh, this is the ASDO learning mission. Uh, in, in my hometown, my hometown is here. So the membership for this learning community is located in the US. And uh, I will show you also something that, uh, uh, that that particular town that I came from, it has another benefit. Uh, the people here uh, in uh, Northern America, they, these are some of them are Ethiopians. Okay, some of them are Ethiopians. Some of them are former Peace Corps volunteers. By the way, uh, if uh, you have uh, in your country or in your village or in your town, uh, uh, Peace Corps in, uh, people coming from international organizations uh, to support your community, one thing you can do is you can connect with them when you develop uh, your learning community. So this is the, uh, I listed these guys 
And by the way, uh, uh, these people, Kathy Toner, Joyce, uh, Mr. Randy Marcus, Ted Thompson, uh, uh, they were uh, they were in our village in 1966. Uh, at that time, I was third grade or something. Okay, so uh, these are all these people are Ethiopians. Uh, some of them actually were supported by the Peace Corps. You see, so we uh, we created that learning community. Right now, uh, these are just a partial list of schools. There are forty schools that are supported by our program. We are not just giving them, you know, books and things like that. We also do uh, education outreach and things like that. So this learning community it started out with by me one. Right now, it has about five thousand members working on this problem. In fact, I don't do anything. It just it just does it on its own because it's on social media, on uh, on Facebook and uh, LinkedIn and things like that. It operates on its own. It has a life of its own. This is the uh, uh, Gondar project, which I told you about. Uh, right now, for example, now many people worry about, you know, where do you get the money? Where do you get the money? By the way, uh, I have to say honestly that uh, the world has plenty of money, okay? Uh, there are many uh, good people uh, uh, with, with willpower to support. The most important is that if your learning community uh, is uh, committed, okay, committed, the money can be found. Uh, for example, one mission uh, for this particular school, it costs us about $20,000. Okay, all this money, I don't know. Uh, when I travel or when our campaigners travel to this place, we have out of pocket expenses, but we go for our benefit. Our benefit is we go to see our families. All this money came from uh, the learning community. We just say, listen, this is a project that we want to do. Are you committed to do this? Yes, you know, everybody saves their coffee and so on. Uh, so that that's how uh, you know funded this learning community. Uh, we get thanks. For example, this is uh, an acknowledgement with one of the ministers uh, about our work. Uh, this is uh, you know the amount of books and uh, educational supplies and computers we take is you know containers. By the way, if there is anyone in this in this room who wants to do uh, projects or uh, create their own learning community and do something in their in their uh, in their community in in africa i am willing to support uh, these are uh, i like to mention probably uh, miriana knows this woman this is uh, dr wanda diaz uh, she is a, a blind astrophysicist she's from puerto rico uh, currently i think she works for harvard uh, uh, a, a sister just mentioned that we have to say one one man model, uh, one person model instead of uh, one uh, one uh, poor man model and you know, per, uh, poor person model. Uh, we don't leave anyone. For example, um, there are uh, you know special needs students in in the place I was born and throughout Ethiopia. And then uh, uh, I met Wanda uh, in. Uh, Bulgaria in one of the space physics conferences. And then we talked about supporting blind students in Ethiopia. She came, she came to my village. Yes. Uh, the books uh, and supplies that we take, uh, most of it comes from Books for Africa. I will tell you how it works and you can start your own project. Um, so uh, now this is, uh, Mariana may like this one. Uh, this is the Adama campaign, Adama University campaign. We collaborated with the Space uh, Science Club. Uh, uh, so uh, we put together people from Jumma University, Makale University, and so on. We did a great outreach uh, uh, in 2011. Uh, by the way, I like this picture better, but we have done uh, in 2014, 2015, all the way to about 2018. Uh, there is a special kind of uh, learning community that we created. This is the student radio astronomy program. Um, we, uh, if Sekazi is listening, he will, he will like this. Uh, these two students are my students, my a &T students. Uh, this radio astronomy program simply uses uh, uh, two, two devices. 
one of the devices is this one, the students are holding it, it's called the Radio Jovi. Um, and then the, uh, there is another one that comes from Stanford, it's called Sudden, uh, it, it is a, a, a 20 kilohertz radio uh, for sudden ionospheric disturbances. This one is used, for example, emissions from, uh, from Jupiter, okay? So what, uh, what we have done is we collaborated with this group the Society of Amateur Radio Astronomer, Astronomers, and then uh, our 2007 activity in space physics. Basically, we ordered, um, we got some of them for free. We ordered these radios. It is a half wave, it uses a half wave antenna. So we have, uh, 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 we have several of them, uh, several of them. We have one in Makale, one in Gondar, and several in Asadla. Our plan is to expand to all over these places so that students can participate in, in a radio astronomy program. So for the prototyping and testing and things like that, I give, uh, this is by the way, um, um, this is, uh, okay, I forgot my students' names. Uh, Destiny, Destiny has now a PhD in uh, material science. She works for Carnegie Mellon, uh, uh, Mr. Pao is uh, doing his PhD. By the way, these are teachers. These are students and teachers actually putting together the radio that my students have put together. So you can, you can integrate your work, uh, your work with the work you are doing. I get credit for this, you know, if I want to apply for promotion or some evaluation and things like that, I can present this so this is a student astronomy. Uh, if you uh, radio astronomy, if you want access to these resources and things like that, I can give it to you and you can call, uh, you know, this program is run by NASA and there are other groups that uh, at Tennessee State University, which I, I, can, I can propose. It's not a problem there. This is, this is Wanda. We visited the special needs school. Her interest is that uh, she works for NASA to develop astronomy books for the blind students. So we collaborated with her and then there is a, a nonprofit organization uh, that caters to uh, sight impaired uh, communities. So we took, uh, you know, this special uh, walking stick uh, and then lots of, lots of braille's, uh, you know, for, uh, for science. Uh, we have volunteers. Again, this is the Physics uh, Society, uh, NSBP uh, and uh, SPS group. So physics students, uh, and uh, actually there are also Ethiopian students that I use, you know, uh, sometimes some of the books come out uh, directly from our, uh, from my office, I store them there. These are again, uh, uh, this guy has a PhD right now working for a defense, as a defense contractor, Ron Gambo. Uh, she is doing her PhD uh, and so on. This is the Center for Books for Africa. Uh, this is located in, in uh, Atlanta. Again, if you want information about the Books for Africa, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Now, what other learning communities are there? This is crazy, by the way. Uh, in, in order to create a, uh, a place for a virtual place for a learning community it takes five minutes. So what happened was since uh, our success at, in Gondar, many universities were demanding. So what we have done is we created uh, spaces in, uh, on Facebook for almost all universities in Ethiopia. So what, what happened right now is in the poor person model, the Ethiopian scientific network as a, an umbrella organization has volunteers in all these universities. For example, if I want to do anything in Makale University, I hope uh, it is still working, or Jimma University, I just have to call any one of the members in this group, and then we get we get what what we want. For example, if someone is coming is going to Jimma University on our behalf, we just call them. We just send them email uh, or. Uh, or chat message that so and so is coming to do this and this in your university. So they wait for him. They they work on the logistics and things like that. Now, 
uh, speaking of uh, uh, women, one of a uh, larger group that we have is we are proud. We have the Isan Women in Physics group. Uh, we have the Isan Women in Science and Technology Engineering Mathematics group, and so on. This is just to uh, to make sure that uh, we are in uh, constant in sync with uh, the language of uh, you know the ambient language. Women, women issue is important, so we have uh, we prepare women, whoever. By the way, in these groups, there may be five members or a hundred members. It doesn't really bother us how many they are as 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 volunteers come uh, and things like that this thing will grow my mother used to say the oceans began with a drop of water when we began uh, you know the Ethiopian scientific and the academic network at uh, 20, 20 years ago or something like that we didn't think that we will have a hundred thousand followers no we didn't we didn't think that we are going to have all these activities going on in Ethiopia we didn't but the oceans began with a drop of water is a very important uh, you know uh, sentence uh, or saying uh, that in a small amounts in small amounts if you began today 20 years from now by the time uh, you know you have you finished you know your professorship or something like that it will be a big big network that will change the world you never know uh, so uh, the uh, the net the Eastern collaboratory right now based on Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay, now this is me, by the way. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am a member of Isan and founder of Isan. The Isan membership is all over the world. This is uh, I took this in 2015. If I do this map again, it will be just. Uh, in a lot of places. Now, here is the interesting part. For example, the guys in South Africa, you know, the members in South Africa, suppose that they decide that uh, they want to draw their own map for the Ethiopian scientific and academic network, that particular person will have many connections all over the, all over the world. In fact, sometimes uh, if we do it, uh, you know, for all the members, uh, I, I, I usually claim this is the new map of Ethiopia. You know, Ethiopia has to live everywhere. So Ghanaians can do the same. Uh, Nigerians can do the same. So Africa is where Africans are, you know, or we always say Ethiopia is where Ethiopians are, you see. So uh, the idea of brain drain, you know, is kind of foolish in my opinion. Uh, if if an activity or if uh, if such network can be managed uh, very well, the flow of intellectual capital from one side of the earth into into Africa it will be very easy. And uh, so, Africa is where Africans are, or Ethiopia is where Ethiopians are. Now, here is our website for Ethiopian Scientific and Academic Network. Um, uh, this is our 2019 report. Uh, I will share the, the website with you. Now, how do we scale this up? Uh, so what we did, uh, a little bit of history about uh, how we scale it up. For example, uh, I want you to pay attention to uh, Physics in Africa session in 2003 in Austin, Texas. I, I was the chair. And then Physics in Africa 2002, National Society of Black Physicists, Alabama and um, Material Research Society, Africa meeting, year 2000. These are critical, uh, critical times, in my opinion, uh, to scale up some of the ideas we were talking about. Uh, and also, if you recall, there was the US Africa Materials Conference in 2000. You know, in all these meetings, because you know, when you build something at Africa level, it is very hard to do, okay? It's very hard to do. So many countries and so many ideas, but you inject the ideas at opportune times. So in all these times, we injected the idea of material society. We injected the idea of uh, uh, the African physical society and so on, okay? 
now I uh, now these voices are being heard. We have a material society in Africa. We have an African physical society in Africa. We have a very strong Ethiopian physical society in North America and in Ethiopia, by the way. So the the things that you can't do, you initiate them. Uh, give the idea out to your learning community. Somebody will run with it. Somebody will listen. Okay. So. Uh, here is uh, uh, one important observation that I made in 2005. This is a meeting in 2005 in South Africa. Uh, it is World Conference on Physics uh, for Sustainable Development 2005. Uh, um, uh, I like to remember uh, Edmond Zingu. Uh, he is one of the organizers. Uh, he passed away recently. But uh, in this conference, what I was hearing was in this sitting, look at this sitting. I'm not a racist, but I just, uh, it just clearly shows. Look where the Africans are, okay? What are we doing here? We are taking notes, okay? Who is on the chair there? There is here the European Physical Society, the Chinese or Korean Physical Society, the American Physical Society and so on lecturing what telling us what to do this is just not the right picture for me uh, on this seat should have been the african physical society the african materialist society representative should have been there actually what they had was uh, the ministry of, the minister of science and technology from zimbabwe or something was speaking in that meeting so what it says to us is that the organizational uh, structure or the organizational uh, content uh, in Africa, as far as uh, professional organization is concerned, is very young. Uh, probably South Africa might, uh, might claim that they have, you know, good organizations and things like that. But the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa is, is, uh, is missing. So all our organizations are very young. Mm. So uh, our goal should be really to be to take this stage and then uh, make decisions on uh, health, you know, governments, stakeholders make decisions how, how physics, how science should be done or uh, and things like that. So this is just for me an eye opener. Okay. So uh, one, uh, I, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, um, uh, Ketevi, uh, you are going to tell me, but uh, this is really interesting that uh, um, you know keep going. We have until eleven o'clock our time here. Very nice. Okay, you, you can stop me anytime because we can discuss it also. Now, after I came in two thousand five, uh, some of the things that I have uh, I wanted to do was astronomy was easier for me. By the way, yeah, astronomy learning community. Um, so what we have done, uh, you know, with uh, a, a group of uh, you know, some Africans here and there, oh, we are going to create something called, uh, by the way, I, my training is condensed matter physics, but I love astronomy. I, I can read it very well. I taught astronomy courses, one advanced astrophysics courses, and also one space physics course. I, I didn't learn them formally. Uh, but I can read them. I have I have a, a big passion. So one of the things that we have done is, uh, as a learning community, we say, okay, let us create the African student training in astrophysical research and observation, ASTARO. So it is a collaboratory. Uh, what it does is basically is one. It is uh, working on ethnoastronomy, traditional astronomy. Ethiopia is uh, one of the most unexplored place for. Uh, uh, ethnoastronomy or traditional astronomy. We have a formal astronomy through religion uh, and also just by tradition, we have a lot of, for example, uh, Miriana may know this, the Murse astronomy or Boron astronomy or Romo astronomy and things like that. The, every tradition has has one. Uh, maybe, maybe not as uh, colorful and elaborate as the South African ethnoastronomy. But that is one interest. The other interest is 
astronomy resources are all available all over all over the place if you go to nasa and ask them uh, to take to download this and that you have it for free if you want to translate something you have it for free so we created this learning uh, uh, group and then one of the ideas was by the way again i can give you uh, information on this particular uh, uh, stuff there is a group uh, called uh, the asteroid search their job is to do uh, uh, to search for asteroids so they are connected with the center for uh, minor planets at harvard so basically what they do is uh, they send you pictures of the sky about four or five pictures of the sky and they 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 you download a software by the way this is done at high school level too you download a software basically you do ima image processing uh, usually they they start i think uh, from uh, mid mid may all the way to about july and things like that so there is a campaign so the idea is to help the african students participate in these campaigns uh, it turns out that a group of ethiopian students and my students we were told we were told by the center for minor planets we found some asteroids nearer so-called near near earth objects so we have this uh, you know africa level work um the other thing is uh, if you look at this blue map um, the 2007 uh, our 2007 space physics activity uh, one of its uh, purposes is to deploy um, gps receivers um, uh, a few degrees uh, north uh, and a few degrees south of the geomagnetic equator uh, we succeeded with that Mm, and lots of African countries participate. That's part of our, uh, you know, astro or space training. And of course, I told you about the African Material Research Society. Remember, when we published this paper, me and uh, Alfred Mazzani are the ones who published this paper in 2000. And uh, uh, in 1998, we have this noise called African Material Research Society. Around 2005, 2006, uh, the African Material Research Society was established. The other thing is, uh, the in 2001, when I went to Benin, lots of students uh, and uh, postdocs were at that meeting. By the way, uh, uh, Sekazi may know this meeting. Uh, there is a, a center for mathematical physics or something, most, mostly run out of uh, uh, Cameroon. So uh, in Benin, we met, we met uh, a lot of students and then a lot of uh, um, professors. One of the requirements, one of them said, I don't recall who he was, one of the requirements for them to get promotion or recognize is to publish their paper in international journals. That's what they say. So, what do we have to do? They, uh, so then send it, send it to physical review, send it to any place you, they, you want. They return them. Uh, their paper is being rejected all the time. That's what they say. Is that true? Yes. Okay. We are going to do, we are going to do it uh, uh, in a tricky way. I came back in 2001 and then uh, we talked about uh, with my colleague, uh, my colleagues at the Center for uh, Mathematical Center in Abuja. Um, and uh, uh, Dr. or Professor Godfrey Akobor, I, I don't know if you know him. Uh, we discussed the, you know, what we can do and you know, what are the things that we can do. And then we say, okay, why not we do this? Create the African Journal of Physics. Uh, I was responsible for getting the ISNN number, okay? The ISNN number. And then this will be basically the African Journal of Physics to be published in the United States, okay? This is an international journal. We have an international journal. Now the African Journal of Physics, there is a model, whoever wants to publish or do their conferences, there is an offer that we can make uh, if uh, interested, I am a board member and uh, uh, 
uh, if you if you are familiar with the uh, international conference on uh, um, uh, on physics for sustainable development uh, th theoretical physics for uh, uh, sustainable development that is that is running uh, mostly near the end of July or beginning of August I will send that information so right now uh, we are uh, at the 15th volume of this journal uh, so mostly the Nigerians are publishing on it. We don't mind opening it to Ghanaians, anybody who is interested in. And also, if you want to publish, you can talk to me. So the, yeah, well, I'm uh, sure there's a the, volume. Uh, 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 baby, so this journal, yeah, I think that's exactly the question. Is he, is, is he open for all branches of physics, for all of us to publish in there? I, it's really informative. I'm glad to hear this, so, uh, you know, um, we wanted to, um, two years ago, when we did the African School of uh, Physics in Namibia, yes. uh, a series uh, uh, you know, of, uh, of papers that we wanted to prepare a special issue. And then we basically you know, ended up having two considerations. Uh, there was the African Physical uh, Review, which is managed at the ICTP. Mm -hmm. And there is the Scientific Africans, which is managed by the next Einstein Institute. But yes. we were not aware of this one. So, okay. So, uh, it's very, could you tell us a little bit? Is your uh, I'm so happy you, you read the question. You see, uh, uh, in this all activities, there is some element of Ethiopia in it. In uh, Ethiopians, we are by tradition. If you don't let us do certain things. We just find our way, all right? Uh, I know when uh, one of the people, I, I forgot his name, uh, once we established this journal, somebody came and then Africa, uh, Africa Physics Review. He called me up and then say, oh, I didn't know that you have Journal of Physics. Sure, I have African, we have African Journal of Physics. Do you want to publish now? Uh, definitely this is, um, by any standard that you, uh, Dr. Keteve, and your students, by any standard, uh, you, it cannot go, you know, the edge value or something like that, okay? We don't know how much. On the other hand, um, this, this person says he, he wants to make the African, uh, he doesn't want to make the name the same, okay? And then he says, oh, our journal is African, uh, physics review and the ICTP is supporting it, right? Uh, definitely, you know, ICTP is so big. Uh, for us, uh, for this particular journal, uh, we don't have any insecurities, by the way. Uh, the model works like this. Uh, one, you can publish astrophysics if you want. Uh, for example, we can sign a memorandum of understanding. When you have your school, um, say, for example, in Nigeria or something, you can say, okay, Kabeda and board members, uh, we want these proceedings to be published to AJP. We can actually sign a memorandum. We publish it. Here is the thing. It's, uh, remember, this is the uh, poor person mo model, right? Uh, if you go through the regular... Uh, publishing process through a regular journal. Okay, you present your manuscript and then uh, the journal owners will prepare their own reviewers. And then after it is reviewed, there is this back and forth, back and forth. Um, this will take a lot of time for publication. And uh, personally, I don't like that tradition. You know, if the spelling is correct, if the science sounds good, and if it is creating new knowledge, I just publish it. So in terms of review, review, if you sign the memorandum of understanding with us, you review it yourself. We just publish it. You understand? It is, it is up to you to review. So- Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually, that's exactly what happened with the African Physical Society. We review, um, all of the contents of the special issues ourselves 
Yes. And then, and then they just publish it. But, uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, in so, fact, well, here is something very interesting. Uh, I, I am proud of, uh, you know, the Nigerian colleagues, uh, uh, you know, the quality of the papers, by the way, we can, we, can, uh, we can send you the website and for your students to look at them. It's so high. The Elsevier, you know, the, the journal publisher, actually want to publish some of the articles, uh, uh, some of the volumes, okay? Uh, in fact, we are communicating with them that they want to publish them. Uh, another development, further development for this journal is to make it just open access. And that way, you know, it can, uh, you know, it can be very nicely circulated and so on. So, hey guys, uh, Africa for Africans by Africans. The, unless, uh, unless we do, uh, we do it ourselves, uh, always following the tales of, uh, you know, the mainstream establishment uh, uh, will not always work. I think uh, Africa need to be as much independent as possible. It's not to say that, you know, we are creating uh, new science or something, we are special. It just means that Europe has it, America has it, Latin America has it, uh, the Asians have it, why not the African? I mean, that's, that's the way I think. So please, uh, I'll send you websites uh, and uh, we are going to meet. Uh, and also, by the way, uh, remember, uh, there is one, uh, one thing that... Uh, the more people play, the better. Uh, as much as possible, you know, making our journals, whether it comes through the African School of Physics, African Physical Society, uh, and through just this kind of, uh, what do you call it? This kind of uh, learning community. By the way, it has its own Facebook and things like that. Uh, learning community approach, one strong one which challenges uh, uh, the African, no, the, the American Physical Society uh, journals is a good thing. Let's work together. Yeah, yeah. Poor man model, guys. Definitely. The poor, oh, yeah, let's, let's talk about that first. Let's start together. Um, before the, the African Physical Society got established, by the way, we established also African Physical Society. We don't talk about this much, by the way. Before the uh, African Physical Society, uh, you know, uh, was uh, but was formed by Alote Be way before that. We have this kind of website sitting and then waiting for people to visit. Uh, right now, it is not necessary. You know, we don't talk much about it because uh, we have we already have the African Physical Society in Africa. But we can be, for example, a satellite site. You know, satellite site, marketing site, and things like that. So the AJP is here. Um, the African Scientific and Academic Network is there too. In the model of the Ethiopian, Afri the Ethiopian uh, Scientific and uh, Africa, uh, Academic Network, we have the so-called ASAN. So ASAN is just like the Ethiopian, uh, the Ethiopian counterpart. There are about, uh, I think, a thousand members right now. Uh, so the idea here is the following for the young people. Uh, uh, because people live all over the place, Nigerians all over the place, Ethiopians all over the place, Ghanaians all, the, all over the place. What we want is we want a place where all of us meet. You can't do it in the, in the current situation. For example, mobility of scientists is, is, is impossible from Africa. It's really almost impossible, right? So our, our, we can do this mo uh, virtual mobility to gather at one location and share ideas, okay? So uh, a network like this allows you, for example, to find a collaborator in Nigeria, a collaborator in Ethiopia, and so on and so forth. So for that purpose, we created this African Scientific and Academic Network. It should have been a million people following it, but, uh, you know, uh, I don't know all Africans. So, so, uh, but Abebe, wouldn't this network, for example, be integrated or associated with the African Physical Society? Absolutely. Yeah, the, we have no problems at all. Uh, in, in other, we, we have to federate ourselves. Some of them are redundant, actually, unnecessary. 
the African uh, Physical Society itself uh, can actually manage and own these things. Okay, what we do is as a, 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 a people who develop the learning community, we grow it, we, uh, we make it nicer and give it to them. The most important is that the young people have access to each other. They should not be like me and you, uh, prevented by passport and things like that. They know how to communicate through their social media and so on. We, we make it, we make it look good, make it professional, make sure that there are the right people there to advise them, to guide them, and then let them manage it. The African, you know, uh, physical society can manage all this stuff. We, we really, it is that, uh, uh, it, it is not necessary to, to, to distribute out our energy everywhere, make, make one or two strong, strong communities. Okay. Now, this is what I have. I don't know uh, how much you learned. In conclusion, what I, I want to say is, if you have five people in your, <laughs> in your LinkedIn follower, or 10 people in Twitter, uh, or a few hundred people in Facebook, that's where you begin. You begin the learning community that you need. In fact, uh, Keteve, uh, when he's talking to me, he is actually clearly indicating uh, uh, the issue that, um, you know, communities like the African Physical Society can benefit, you know, how do we manage this? Uh, one learning community that we can create is one, um, uh, volunteer, for example, for the African uh, Scientific Network or for the other networks, we just need to have volunteer moderators, okay? In that learning community, these moderators, for example, the group of students who are here or young people who are here can be moderators. And then they invite the people who can do something. And then we don't park the group, by the way. Uh, the group or this learning community is not just a collection of people, okay? It, they, it brings a lot of stuff together. Number one, it is of course a collection of people. It's like the so-called database, right? Uh, it is a database of experts. It's also a database of ideas. So for example, uh, Dawit may say, listen, such and such and such things should happen in such and such community, right? And then he, he writes five sentences, 10 sentences, a paragraph of it, an idea, right? Uh, okay, uh, Miss uh, uh, Smith, will will do the same i do the same so when all these ideas are there it's a collection of ideas it's it's a research nugget it's an activity nugget so there will be a hero that person who proposed it will be the promoter the hero of that and then what we what the network does is okay is that what you want to do okay what are the to-do list and then they divide the, the work and they do it so we make it better and good and great ideas in it and then just hand over the management uh, or the you know or uh, you know make it beneficial to african physical society in fact we want the strongest society possible uh, it can be done um other things uh, it is, it takes, uh, remember, the most important uh, lesson uh, that my mom taught me is that the oceans began with a drop of water, okay? These droplets collected and then they became the oceans. Uh, if, uh, you know, when I was uh, very, very young, we lived uh, in a house that, you know, when it rains, water comes in through the roof. <laughs> so, uh, if you let that thing uh, just, uh, you know, if it keeps up, it will flood the room. Just drops will flood the room. So it is uh, the same. Uh, so the oceans did, uh, began with a drop of water. This conversation is that drop of water. So we have to talk as much as possible and then uh, uh, work out the logistics, uh, whatever it takes, because we have experts. Remember, uh, money is not the problem. 
organization is a problem. When you have a good organization, the money will come, right? So uh, organization, the right organization, the strongest organization, the rest, money, everyone wants to pay for something good. Uh, the goodwill of people uh, is there always. Governments have goodwill too. So let's talk, let's discuss. Um, Abebe, yes. thank you very much for this, uh, for this uh, uh, um, talk. It's very inspirational and challenging and, and it's very, very nice. Um, there's a couple of uh, questions on the chat. Uh, Munia, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for this uh, nice presentation. So I have uh, two questions. <laughs> First one uh, is how to make Africa attractive for young African physicists trained in the Europe or America? And what can young African physicists do differently to both physics at home countries? Thank you. Uh, how, to make Af how to make Africa attractive for Africans? Yeah, young African. OK. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the second one, I didn't hear it. You will tell me again. It's make... uh, what can young African physicists do differently to both uh, physics uh, at home countries? OK, differently. Uh, the first one, uh, how to make Africa attractive for Africans so that uh, Africans stay home and do physics in Africa. Is that the first question? Yeah, how to make Africa attractive for young African physicists in it in the Europe or America? And uh, yeah, so that they don't go to Europe and America. Oh no, no, not necessarily. I don't think necessarily that they don't go. But you know, uh, Abebe, you you mentioned the question of brain drain, but the, the problem is that if they are engaged in Africa in some ways, that is fine. We are using the talent, but if they don't have any path of engagement they are really lost to Africa. If so, 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 so how do they get engaged and how do they, you know, it's made attractive for them and, and, and so forth. Uh, you mean in terms of uh, doing physics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Like, I, if I understand so that, so that question, they, right. they become, they become physicists. I don't understand your question. Is it, uh, is yeah, it you yes, asking me? for young people to become physicists instead of engineers? How, how, we, how, how to make Africa attractive for, uh, for young physicists, I mean. Oh, how to make attractive. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, how to make Africa attractive. I, um, okay, first of all, I don't have data in terms of, uh, you know, um, I don't know if you have this data in terms of whether, um, People did research whether Africa is attractive, uh, you know, for Af uh, for physicists and things like that. Uh, I don't have data. On the other hand, um, let, let me mention the common problem, say, in the United States, uh, in uh, Europe, and things like that. The Africans pay attention to this. The common problem, the biggest problem. For example, uh, in the United States, we have. African Americans and minorities. Okay, it's a big, big population. Okay, uh, so uh, the biggest issue for government, for universities, and things like that in general, in general, it's the same throughout whether you have historically black universities or majority serving universities like so called white universities, that it is very difficult to attract smart young people to come and do major in physics. So many departments have challenges. Why? Why that is a key? Okay. Uh, for them, for them, I think it's probably true uh, in Africa too. Uh, for many young people, the most important thing for them is, you know, how much money I will get, how much salary I will get, when I graduate, right? Th that's an, an important question for them. Usually the students, you know, the salary that you would get uh, as a physics graduate is not as attractive as the salary you would get as an engineering graduate. Uh, 
in Africa, it is probably the same. Uh, you know, people who are doing physics, young people who are doing physics, probably do it out of dedication and really love than, you know, looking for prestige and things like that. So how do you make it attractive? Um, I think in terms of investment, uh, the governments and the concerned bodies uh, must emphasize uh, the importance of physics. The other attractive thing that for physicists is physics, mathematics, chemistry, biology, bio, bio, in general, this uh, so-called you know, hard sciences or pure sciences, uh, is that, uh, listen to this, if the Americans don't want to do physics, if the Chinese also, they are in the way of not doing physics, Europeans have the same problem. It is actually a big, super big chance for Africans to do physics and mathematics. Do you understand? If no one does it, we African, Africans have a chance to become the best physicists in fact getting the Nobel Prize because many in general, these big communities or the countries, the interest in physics is very low. Think about that. So, uh, you know, uh, if <laughs> these superpowers, these countries, right? They have to do physics to survive. They have to do mathematics to survive. If their population don't want to do physics, you do it, we do it, we take the job. So that should be one attractive point. You will have a job, you'll have a PhD positions and things like that. So tell everyone to study physics, pure physics, pure mathematics, pure biology, pure chemistry. That's one. The second question, uh, you have to repeat it again. Yeah, uh, so uh, what can young uh, African scientists, uh, scientists do differently to avoid physics at home countries? Oh, uh, to, to make physics, okay. Uh, don't be, uh, when I grow up, by the way, when I was growing up, okay. my job is just, in addition to, uh, you know, tending animals, uh, my job is to go to school and come back. Uh, no left, no right, okay? That's it. When I went to college, physics, that's it. I, I have not volunteered. I have not gone out uh, to recruit or to tutor students. I have not done all that stuff. So we were put in one place. We have to do that. We finished, got my bachelor's, got my scholarship. That's it. I think you can do young people can do differently than say, for example, my generation, okay? One thing one thing can do is you really have to volunteer, especially with girls, right? Uh, there are not that many in science and mathematics. You can count them by hand. Uh, for example, in our women in physics group uh, in Ethiopia, Ethiopian women uh, in physics group, I don't think there are more than 20 people 20 women in, in physics uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, probably Mariana, uh, Mariana knows and she, she can do something on this. Yeah, she, it, she said uh, she had to leave for another meeting. So she sends her, her, her regard to you. Okay. And uh, she wants to uh, be in touch with you. Neat, very neat. So what, what I advise, I advise uh, uh, for, for young uh, people to do is to really go out there and put a message out there so that more students can come uh, to, to the program. Uh, if there are anything attractive, you know, to, to take students attract, uh, being attracted to science and things like that. One, I think, uh, you know, if you can, you know, do the outreach program, uh, collaborate with, you know, Ketevi, me, anybody you can find through your learning community and help you build something that students can see and things like that would help, uh, in, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else has any other questions or comments? Ekazi is here. 
by the way, Sekazi, you know, he can talk about his uh, uh, increased program. If there are uh, international students here, uh, here in the US, uh, uh, contact him. Uh, it's an, an important place. Uh, you know, those of you who are looking for postdoc positions and things like that, don't be quiet. You are not alone. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, immigration status you have. We, we will try our best. Uh, to advise you, to guide you, and uh, to network you with people, by the way. Uh, one of the things that we have to do uh, as Africans living everywhere in the world, one thing we have to do is we have to place our young people at the right place. If there is a faculty position, a postdoc position, any industrial position, uh, the trick here is the following. After, uh, don't wait until you finish your PhD. You know, six months, a year before you finish your PhD, Send out your resumes everywhere. I'm graduating at such and such time. I'm looking for postdoc position, you know. Uh, and then we take that resume, we send it to our friends. By the way, uh, Sekazi can uh, and Ketevi probably can say that. In the United States, uh, we want the best and brightest, by the way. Think about that. <laughs> okay, you can come from anywhere. You can come from the moon, get a job here. Um, you, you have to be the best. So as soon as you, you know, you, you get your resume ready, share it. Uh, you know, networks like the African Physical Society that Keteve is talking about, the African Scientific Network, the Ethiopian Scientific Network, our main, main also objective among other things is to place Africans anywhere they want, anywhere they want. I mean that literally, anywhere they want. So you are not alone. We may not give you money, but we give you advice. We, we give you, okay, talk to someone, talk to this guy, talk to, talk to that guy. You, you, you become part of that network, you see? So, uh, as uh, you know, what makes Africa, uh, you know, physics and things like that attractive, it, it has a support system. We, basically, we have to refine this, that support system so that more Africans come to, uh, to anywhere they wish, anywhere they wish, not just Africa, anywhere they wish. As I told you, mm, <laughs> I don't believe that there is brain drain. I don't believe so. There is brain mismanagement, two different things. <laughs> Brain mismanagement. Look, if the logistic, look what happened just today. I live in North Carolina. You live somewhere in Nigeria. Somebody is in London. Somebody is in Ethiopia. Where is the brain drain here? Where is it? We, we share, we share. As long as we create that environment to share, to discuss ideas and things like that, there, everything is logistics. Once the logistics, why is that people don't talk about the uh, brain drain from Europe to America or from California to N N New York? There is brain drain from California to New York. They don't talk about it. It's because the system is so integrated, it doesn't matter where you live. You can, you can be productive from wherever you are. So brain mismanagement is a problem in Africa. I don't think brain drain is a problem. Yeah. It's management. Yeah, so that's, uh, thanks uh, uh, Abibi for that, uh, uh, um, you know, paradigm shift in the understanding of what brain yeah. drain is. And, and Let us take Azi, for example, uh, he is in the category of African diaspora. Ham, this Sekazi meeting has done a hundred times more than some African professor sitting in Addis Ababa. That is true. That is definitely <laughs> think, true. Think about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he is building all big programs. Yeah. Every now and then he goes to Africa and then does the discussion and advisors and things like that. The rest is just uh, from the United States. This should be a great example of that brain mismanagement. Of course, Africa must be attractive to its young people. Uh, Africa must retain its young people. That is a system issue. That's a structure, a big structural issue, which is very hard to do on the learning community level. 
okay? G governments have to have policies, pay them good, uh, make sure that there is the research facility they need. But everything else is logistics. The one, uh, I want to leave you about this brain drain. Um, is it uh, Thailand? There is a Thailand model for, uh, you know, how they manage their brain drain. <laughs> Harvard University, there are people in Harvard, MIT, Thailand people, they integrated the graduate program. Wherever there is a Thailandi guy in some major university, that particular graduate program is integrated with the Thailand program. So the transfer of knowledge between the two, you know, that person sitting in Harvard and somebody sitting in Thailand is just a very simple funding model that allows people, uh, organizational model that allows, uh, allows people to exchange ideas and do their experiments. You can do your experiment in Harvard or in Thailand, integrated. So Africa at, at union level, structural level, at government level, they have to come up with a working logistics uh, so that the flow of talent, you know, this human talent capital is allowed to flow. But at our level, at learning community level, for us, we are claiming that there is brain mismanagement. There is no brain drain, but we can still do the job. So placing our students, advising our students so that they can go to the highest office. They can be in the highest office possible. Okay, that's what we have to do at learning level yeah very good um so yeah this is uh, this is uh, this is really uh, a great talk and uh, we have to continue the conversation so we will uh, invite you back uh, um you know uh, for for future engagement um there were also some discussion among uh, some of the few uh, senior colleagues uh, as Vendini. I'm not sure if you know Umaka and so forth. So um, they, they, they are all interested to talk to you further because uh, the, you have raised a lot of, uh, a lot of points that, that definitely require a concerted uh, discussion and efforts. And, and your experience uh, is, is really useful to, to the African community at large. Very nice. Um, yeah. So I, I, I really appreciate the invitation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we, we, and we, uh, let's more. talk about the the journal. Yeah, we, yeah, definitely that too, definitely. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, um, so they. I think there was also a question about uh, technical equipment by many students to connect to our field. Perhaps scientists from a country might be more identified in that uh, community. Perhaps it's mismanagement. Um, I think there are, they are talking about the access to technical equipment by many students to connect to the field. Um, Technical equipment, meaning research equipment? Yeah, it could be research equipment. It could even be as well as a good internet connection, which are also hampering a lot of this virtual uh, uh, step of engagement, which we have mm -hmm. seen that, um, you know, uh, many of our students, uh, even virtually, they have internet is just not there, or they have to buy the internet themselves, you know, all sort of even virtual is not very easy uh, I see. in some communities. You see, um, th this one, again, uh, with the, okay, we may not be able to give immediate solution, okay? If there is an in internet issue in Ethiopia, which is very common, by the way, Ethiopia is the worst, um, the, in Ethiopia, uh, or in Ghana or in any other place, we cannot give immediate solution. Remember, uh, our students, uh, our, when I say our students, our African students have many challenges, really many challenges. Um, they are, uh, um, it's like uh, the world is like a hundred, a hundred meter dash, okay? You have to finish this in 10 seconds, right? 
So all the students, right? They have, imagine a freshman student in Ghana, Ethiopia, in Africa, okay? A freshman student in the United States. Everyone starts at the same uh, location. Now the gun is off, the Africans will just wait until the other guys finish. It's just not fair, okay? Uh, remember, the education system, the uh, students must know this. The education system, whether, whether it is uh, uh, implemented in Ghana, in Ethiopia, or in California, Harvard, or something like that, this is the same. Physics 101 is physics 101 anywhere in the world, okay? It's a standard system. Higher education is a franchise system. Higher education is a system that is designed to make global citizens, okay? You know, you can graduate from Ghana, you can work in Alaska, okay? You can graduate in Nigeria, you can work anywhere on the planet. That is what higher education means. Higher education did not deliver for Africa. It didn't. It, it created, because of this mismanagement and funding and things like that, it created classes. So you have class, we call it the Western world. We have a subclass, we call it Africa. That's what happens. So there is a totally bad structure, okay? So how do you change that? That's why you need African physical society. That's why you need all these networks to come together and make a big network and make noise at African Union. So, for example, uh, in the longer, in the near term, uh, we can actually, as a strong community, organize ourselves, bring our experts together. We can start, for example, a program uh, or a funding program, an engineering program that allows uh, for broadband, for broadband to be cheaply accessible or freely accessible. We can do that. Yeah, broadband at this time, you know, uh, in the United States, broadband for rural areas, broadband for uh, inaccessible areas. A lot of companies are actually putting satellites out there. You know, what is it for us? You know, what are the things that we have to do to access broadband? It can be done. It can be done. Even at school level, it can be done at this time. But what we need is organization and putting together uh, the proposals, uh, the projects that we need. At least if we can, if we have, uh, if we select, for example, a few schools in Ghana, a few schools, you know, like for sample purposes, for demonstration purposes, uh, perhaps uh, after do the first demo and then proceed to make a bigger, uh, a bigger one. Uh, uh, you know, the satellite satellite is a little expensive. I talked to, for example, uh, to Ethiopian satellite uh, uh, operators and things like that. Upload data, download data, and things like that. You know, in one a, a few megabytes it costs a thousand dollars or something like that so th those are limitations because of structure but locally uh, perhaps through the african physical society and uh, putting together the network is making some voice and writing proposals for demonstration purpose first will will work uh, it's a difficult problem uh, yeah, yeah, and also it's difficult to get it for free. Yeah, we, we have to know that free. I don't like the word, by the way, free. We have to work hard and get it ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Broadband. All right. So, um, yeah, we'll continue this discussion. And the young people who are connected, they have uh, heard you, heard it from you. Okay. Uh, so that's very good. <laughs> okay. Um, my email, I write my email for them. Yeah. Um, so uh, maybe we should take the picture now. Um, yes. People who wants to uh, uh, who want to uh, uh, turn on the camera, please uh, do so, and uh, Munia will take the picture. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna send them my Twitter stuff. Mm, hold on. Mm. The 
at my Twitter. Who is this? Uh, okay. Um, thank you very much. I really do appreciate uh, this. Uh, um, so this uh, just to acknowledge a few people here, we have uh, Professor Umaka from Senegal. Oh, so, my. I'm not sure if you know him. And we also have uh, Dr. Uh, Herman White. Uh, he has been at uh, Fermilab just recently uh -oh. retired. Um, we also have Professor Asmandini Muronga from uh, South Africa, but I think uh, um, he, he may not uh, turn on his video right now. It's, there's load shedding going on there. Um, and then we have a lot of uh, young African uh, postdocs here, uh, you know, so uh, Sumialo here is from Togo. She's currently doing postdoc in Italy. Oh, uh, Munia. Munia is uh, 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 from Morocco. Um, oh, she's okay. also a postdoc. The country of Maghreb, um, okay. Yeah, so, and then we have some students and, and, and so forth. So uh, there is really uh, the whole community or the, you know, Africa is represented here in this small group right yeah, now. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I love this very much. I see my countrymen too, Tarrakeng. That's right. yeah. In the Tarrakeng. How are you doing, man? Yeah, it is nice. Uh, I, I really love it. I hope that, I hope that we will work together, uh, uh, especially those of you postdocs and things like that. Extend your horizon, okay? It's not just Italy, okay? Uh, we want you to go to, the, to Mars. Seriously, you have to take us, you have, you have to brave it for us because uh, we didn't get a chance. And also, by the way, remember, it's the best time to be young. I love that. Yeah, I love that. It's the best time to be young. It is so. the best time to be young. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So let's, uh, the most important thing when you create your learning community and things like that, uh, it's just something has to happen. Really think about something you want to solve. And then we work that together. Uh, we, we develop our learning community in whatever shape you want. And then we, we, we take it to the limit. Remember, if you are like 25 years old now, when you are my age, what you start to do be so huge that, you know, you may take over a country, okay? That's what we want you to do. All right. Very good. So Munia, could you take the screenshot? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, you did already? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Don't have don't have camera. It's okay. I like I like her man. You look excellent. Kia, you look excellent. Tarek and Indagan and oh, okay. yeah. I think Kay must be from Nigeria. Are you from Nigeria? I yes. 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 I have a mountain in my name. I am Otumba. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> your yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody named me Otumba. Yes, that's yeah. uh, very close to a king. Someone yeah, 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 yeah. named me. I have a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monia, could you retake the picture again? I think some people have just turned on the camera. Okay, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I, yeah. I hope we'll see each other in Africa. I may go to Ethiopia if you have messages. I'll take messages to Ethiopia. Ethiopians want uh, the African school to come to them. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we are will, a little we messed up it. now. We will arrange it. 2023 yeah. or something, yeah. Yeah, we will arrange it, definitely. Yes, yes. Yeah, they have a lot of followers, by the way, in Ethiopia. Mm. Uh, the school has a lot of followers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and yeah. we'll continue the discussion. And uh, it's very nice and inspirational talk and uh, very, very good. Thank you, Abebe. And thank, thank you. Everybody. Thank you so much. I hope to see the recording, OK? Yes, definitely. We yeah. need it for market. Yeah. Nice Have talk. a great day. Bye. Thank you. Everybody, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Tarek. Bye. 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 Bye.